So from trade now to health, uh, we are of another series and are reimagining the relationship between the UK and India. Now, part of the 2030 roadmap laid out between Prime Ministers Modi and Johnson included discussions and cooperation around health. In fact, I counted the words health, healthy, healthcare appear 37 times in the 2030 roadmap. So as we reimagine these relations, I am really delighted to host together in their first live interaction, uh, the UK Secretary of State for Health, Right Honorable Sajid Javid. Thanks so much for coming along. How Thank are you? you? You're very good. Thanks for inviting me. Good. I'm looking forward to this. Pleasure to have you. We're also really pleased to have joining us virtually Union Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Dr. Mansouk Mandavia. Have we got you Thank online? You. How are you today? Thank you. There he is. How are you? Can you hear us? Yes. Great to have you. Well, I tell you what, let's dive straight in, Honorable Minister Mandavia. Let's start with the UK-India ties, shall we? UK and India are celebrating and marking 75 years of bilateral ties. I wonder what you think best illustrates, best demonstrates the enduring nature and significance of this relationship? Uh, thank, thank you. you. Within the already ongoing between India and UK with COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare and emergency crisis management has emerged as another important area of collaboration. The strength of India-UK partnership was demonstrated to the world by the highly successful collaboration on the AstraZeneca and Oxford University vaccine with the Serum Institute of India. The R&D capacities of AstraZeneca and Oxford coupled with the manufacturing capacity of SSII together created a global group which has saved many lives in the world. India, as one of the largest vaccine manufacturers, offered its manufacturing capacity to add availability of cost-effective vaccines, not just to the UK, but also to various low- and middle-income countries. I am happy to note that the third year UK joint working groups of health was held recently, wherein topic issue of antimicrobial resistance, pharmaceutical cooperation, strengthening cooperation in human resources for health and digital health were discussed. India, UK have also agreed to closely work together to strengthen the global response to further health emergencies and working towards developing vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. Recognizing technology as an enabler in health service delivery, India welcomes the collaboration between national health authority and national health, health services in digital health and associated technologies to solid, solidify our collaboration in healthcare. India and UK can engage further on implementation of digital health solutions, joint health research initiative, technology transfer, and cost effective manufacture. Syringes between India and UK can ensure availability of affordable vaccines, drugs, and thera therapeutics to the world. Thank you, Honorable Minister. So, Secretary of State, what would you add to that? Because it is really true, isn't it, that the cooperation between the Serum Institute, between Oxford, was one of the great moments within uh, the pandemic. But what else would you add? What else do you think, as we celebrate, as we mark and reflect on 75 years of this relationship between the UK and India, what would you remark, what do you think demonstrates enduring nature or significance of the relationship? Well, um, the first of thank you again for inviting me. It's great to be here with uh, Mansouk and to, uh, to, to see him uh, as well. 
Uh, but I mean, first of all, before we even get to health, I think the, the relationship is incredibly strong. India is uh, one of our oldest friends, uh, and uh, we have so much in, in common, a shared history, a shared culture, a shared language, uh, and, uh, and that shows in the relationship. I think our relationship has never been stronger. We saw that recently with the visit of you know, Boris Johnson to, to India uh, earlier uh, this year. And, and also, if I could say, it matters to me personally. Mm. Well, my father was born in India, and I love the part? country. In, uh, in Punjab, just mm -hmm. outside Amritsar, in a place called Jalandhar. And, um, uh, but it matters to me personally. India's got a special place in my heart, and I, it really it, it matters to me to keep building that relationship. It's strong, but you can always keep mm. building and working uh, together. Uh, when, and then we saw that with, with healthcare, and uh, Mansouk has just given a fantastic example of, you know, on, the, on the vaccines and cooperation. Uh, but uh, we were able to help each other, and that's what good friends do. You know, we, uh, India helped us with vaccines, and, uh, mm. uh, and that was fantastic. When India saw a, a big surge in cases, and uh, uh, we were able to respond immediately with PPE, mm -hmm. with uh, equipment and, and things like that. And we, you know, it's, uh, it, that, and that's what a good bilateral relationship is I about. That friends moment. help that was each a, other. That was a scary moment. Yeah, yeah it, it was. And it was, uh, it, it, but when, when, when it's a scary moment for India, it's scary for us because mm. we, we, we care so much for each other. Um, and we keep building on that. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so, for example, at the moment, India and the UK are doing a, a joint trial called a recovery trial. So linked to COVID on, on therapeutics. And mm -hmm. we're working together on clinical trials. And, and it just shows you how we will uh, keep, keep doing that, working together. Well, we've had COVID, but let's look at some of the emerging health threats because mm. the pandemic may be, it's not over, but it's, it's entering into a different phase yeah. uh, in the UK. It's really drawn attention, hasn't it, to significant economic and societal costs of global health threats. So talk to me about how the UK and India are, um, are jointly approaching some of these other emerging threats. Yeah, I mean, so first we also, or all of us saw through the pandemic, just how you know, a health issue mm. can affect everything in your society. I mean, literally everything. And, and that was true for India, for us, and so many countries. We're all learning lessons from, for them to, yeah. to be better prepared for the, for the next big threat. And some of those threats are actually very visible. We can, you know, they're, they're very clear. And, mm. and at the top of the list, I'd put the antimicrobial resistance. And, uh, and that is an area of huge cooperation between uh, India and the UK. We both care about it deeply. Mansouk and I recently, when we met in Geneva, at the World Health Assembly, that's one of our key things that we talked of. The, the UK is working with India uh, on that, you know, for example, through the Fleming Fund, you know, supporting uh, uh, joint work, uh, not just for you know, antimicrobial resistance in humans, but also animal health as well, mm. because you know, we, we both value this, what we call the sort of one health approach and, and that is the sort of the silent pandemic you know we can see it it's happening it's been going on in the background whilst we've been trying to deal with covid and, and we need to uh, the world needs to come together uh, in that but india's role in that is, is crucial just given the sheer size and importance uh, uh, of, of india but of course the uk can play a big role in that and we will um, also we've got to look out for new new, new potential zoonotic disease mm -hmm. threats so we have a joint program with India on uh, zoonotic disease uh, research. What's and that? What is a zoonotic disease? Well, like, like COVID. Okay. You know, so where it, it, the origin is from the animal world, mm -hmm. uh, and then it sort of jumps into the, the human world. And, uh, and so we've got to look out for that, because we can see from COVID uh, that uh, no one knows when uh, it will happen, mm. but I think we have to be ready for the next pandemic. You know, the, 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 there's lots of reasons, climate change and uh, your demographics and things which suggest there will be another sort of a new disease at some point, mm. and we've got to be better prepared, whether it's with vaccines and therapeutics. And I think that that relationship we've built up over COVID is, is going to be key in tackling that too. Interesting. Uh, Honourable Minister, let's hear from, the, from your perspective from India about, about what emerging health threats uh, you're focusing on. We've heard about some of the, the cooperation between the UK and India. What else would you add? You see that COVID-19 has highlighted the need to focus on building resilient health system capable of withdrawing emerging health threats, striving towards achieving universal health coverage, and to ensure accessibility, affordability, and availability of healthcare. 
इंडिया अंडर द ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी जी हैज लॉन्च्ड एन ओवर चार्जिंग अप्रोच टू आयुष्मान भारत विथ इट्स फोर एसोसिएटेड पिलार्स अंडर द आयुष्मान भारत हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस सेक्टर 150,000 health and wellness centers are being established to provide a preventive, promotive, We're having a little delay in the line there. And breadth of the country. Second pillar of her Prime Minister Jan Arugius provides health assurance to 500 million Indian citizens or identified secondary and tertiary health services free of cost in a cashless and paperless manner, making it the biggest government funds health insurance scheme in the world. Through its pillar of Aishman Bharat Health Infrastructure Mission and outlay of uh, 8.8 has been sanctioned to strengthen surveillance, create a network of integrated public health labs, infectious disease, hospital and research network across the country to aid ongoing COVID-19 management and to manage any future health emergencies. Four pillar of Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, seamless interview intervenes these initiatives to create continuity of care and is working towards the establishment to digital health ecosystem for country the present pandemic has highlighted two fault lines in the architecture beside working towards creating raw infrastructure in the country india is also Short delay in the line there. We'll see if we can get back. And advocating use of technological tools as global public goods. India is also embracing the cause of distributed manufacturing of drugs, vaccines, and therapeutics. With specific focus on not only access but affordability as an approach to ensure equitable healthcare. India and UK need to collaborate on this aspect in the international forum. Thank you yeah. very much, uh, Honorable Minister. We've got a deep nodding of a head there. Mm. So, uh, another item on the agenda for your next mm. uh, meeting. Um, Honorable Minister Mandavia, let, let's stay with you for a moment. You know, you mentioned COVID-19, you mentioned the impact on the health infrastructure. It really highlighted the pandemic, the need for resilient uh, health infrastructure at the national and also at the international level. So I wonder when you look back now, what are the main lessons that you learned, that India learned um, as your country leveraged augmented existing health infrastructure? Um, in order to effectively manage COVID-19? Under the prompted leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji, India had adopted a proactive and graded approach. While dealing with this once in the century crisis of COVID-19, we initiated surveillance at point of entry and we did it much before the declaration of public health emergency of international concern by WHO. Understanding the highly infectious natures of the disease, we created a dedicated infrastructure for management of COVID-19. Three categories of facilities dealing with mild, moderate, and severe pressures were established as early as March 2020 from a single lab in January 2020 to 3,392 labs at present. We have now the capacity of conduct more than 2.5 million per day. India augmented domestic production of PPE kits and N95 masks 
and over 1,100 indigenous manufacturers of PPE kits were developed. India is presently the second largest exporter of PPE kits at 95 marks in the world. Union government supported states in India for rapid infrastructure augmentation through the emergency COVID package with the outlet 1.9 billion and 3 billion. More than 200 technical advisories related with containment testing, clinical management, and multiple aspects of COVID management to aid COVID-19 response is issued. Capacity building of healthcare staff across the country was taken up through a network of national and state level centers of excellence, which organized cascaded training of medical fatality, of clinical management protocols. In fact, I can highlight it that it is a classic example of a whole of government and all of society approach. So, needed in management of any pandemic which has been adopted successfully by India. It is with this strategic approach that India has been able to manage the spread of infection with currently 31,653 cases per million and 383 deaths per million. Okay. Amongst the lowest in the world. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Dr. Menavia. We're going to come back to you, but time marches on. I wonder if you'd like to build on, on what you heard there, uh, and yeah. particularly looking at this resilience of health infrastructure. It was shaken during COVID-19. When you look back, what are the lessons that you've learned? Look, I think we've all learned a lot. And, uh, and one is that you know, no one wants to see the response to a, a new pathogen that's uh, you know, like COVID in, in the future, that being you know, lockdowns and, and all of that. I think everyone understands why that happened, mm. trying to stop people from you know, mixing in the normal way. But the, the, the way out of any future risk uh, uh, has got to be through pharmaceutical uh, mm. defenses. And, uh, and that requires, first of all, you know, good data and surveillance good science capability you know, to understand the pathogen, to be able to decode it quickly, to try and understand how it spreads. You know, with COVID, there, were, there was quite a bit of information at the start, but, mm. uh, but uh, it certainly wasn't all available as soon as it could be. And that's why I think uh, the World uh, uh, Health Organization working on a new pandemic instrument, you know, a legally binding instrument that will oblige all countries to share information early mm. is, is going to be really important. That's a lesson learned. Um, the other thing on pharmaceutical defenses was vaccines. You know, we saw whether it was the Serum Institute in India, it's AstraZeneca uh, here in the UK, uh, also the mRNA technology mm -hmm. from uh, BioNTech, Pfizer and, and, and Moderna. I think it's great, for example, in the UK, we're getting this big inward investment from Moderna. They're going to move their, their global uh, R&D headquarters here to the UK, do more clinical trials here in the UK. That helps up build up future defenses, but also uh, therapeutics. You know, both in India and the UK, uh, we were quick early adopters of therapeutics. Here in the UK, uh, we discovered the, the, you know, how dexamethasone could be used, and that mm -hmm. saved millions of lives. Um, um, but um, alongside that, it's also the, the diagnostics. You know, look at how people today in their home can do a test for yeah. COVID, and you know, that was unimaginable being able we to test. We all got used uh, to that. that. Yeah, we, we got used to that. And, and, and people accepted that and, and, and trying to sort of build on that for the future. So, look, there's a lot there, but the important thing is the lessons are being learned. And, and, and in India and the UK working together, uh, I think we can absolutely, I'm confident, we can be much better um, prepared for the next big What do you think we can do better on manufacturing locally where, where it's needed? That was one of the things is getting the vaccines and getting trust in vaccines to places in Africa, for example, which yeah. we know um, the inequity continues even today, but part of that needs to be safe, effective manufacturing of, of vaccines, not just for COVID, but for everything in more localized parts. Yeah, and I think that is a, a lesson learned uh, as well. We don't want to see, you know, there were, uh, I remember sort of at the start of the pandemic, a bit of what you call vaccine nationalism mm. uh, and things, and you want to make sure everyone can get, you know, as you say, fair, equitable access. I think so more manufacturing capability in different parts of the world mm. is, is is a very important component of that but i think we mustn't just get drawn in too much into it. it's about manufacturing it's, yeah. it's about ultimately you want to 
it's no good manufacturing it if you can't get it into arms. Yeah. Right. And they're, they're very different things. Yeah. And uh, what we found actually just starting even a few months ago, we've got plenty of vaccine yeah. that we're trying to give I know. Uh, to countries. And uh, even when uh, COVID is a bigger threat than it is today, but a lot of countries were ultimately turning it down or it's just wasting away in warehouses mm. because they didn't have the infrastructure, the logistics to get it into people's arms. Now, India could get it into people's arms. Mm. We could. Uh, but sadly, there's many countries, particularly in Africa, that couldn't. And I think there's, there's work to be done there as well. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting mm. one. Let's come back to the Honorable Minister uh, Mandavia in India. Tell us about communications, smartphones, uh, televisions, 1.4 billion citizens in India. Talk about how you get information across mm. to these people, especially as the pandemic uh, progresses uh, and as health issues change. How do you continue being able to speak to people quickly? It is important part of our COVID management, community engagement through effective risk communications and awareness building on various aspects of COVID-19 management, including adherence of COVID safe behavior, challenges related to vaccination hesitancy and vaccine Eagerness was a critical element in winning the battle against COVID. Honorable Prime Minister Pierre headed the efforts towards creating Jan Andalan means people's movement and Jan Hagidai means community participation through regular interaction with community and all stakeholders. His personal appearance elicited a strong positive response from the masses, promoting behavior change and compliance to COVID-appropriate behaviors. List of Health website provided authentic in authenticate information pertaining to travel advisory, SOP, guidelines on clinical management. It had over 220 million hits at speak during day, utilizing access of mobile and telephones. Call up to messages in 13 regional languages, reaching more than 1.70 billion subscribers were disseminated, identified network of medical professionals, provided authentic information through multiple medias, including in regional language to ally Miss Very different, isn't it? Yeah, thank, I'm, going to pause you. I'm going to pause you there because we're running out of time. But 170 plus TV programs with total Sorry, Minister. of 830 million views, 5,131 tweets on Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Welfare officials' Twitter sender. Thank you. I'm going to pause you there, Minister. Minister, I'm Facebook sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to and pause you right there. 140 he YouTube videos were published, boosting, myths, ensuring factual information and dissemination of success were taken up through social media. 400 plus social media influencers were briefed to promote factually accurate information and boosting Miss and misconception about the COVID-19 vaccine. Right. 195 community radio networks and 150 private radio stations were engaged to create awareness, particularly in the remote and rural parts of the country. Minister, can Our you hear me? Field staff, ANM, ASHA, and frontliner workers disseminated information on the ground to reach the last mile, we Thank you. leveraged print and electronic and social media for interaction with community besides regular press briefing at national, state and district level on the regular basis. We thus had 360 degree approach for comprehensive risk communication to manage infodemic and a lot and misconception. Minister, thank you so much. 
He had, a, he had a mission there, didn't he, to get that message across. Um, I, I want to talk to you about digital health. That issue around communication is obviously so important. But let's end on this issue around um, digital health, which has been absolutely fundamental, not only in managing the pandemic, but also in managing ongoing um, health systems concerns. So I wonder if you'd like to just talk, reflect a little bit on what you've learned and what, you, what we can see from the future in digital health in the UK as well. Well, actually, I mean, just yesterday, I published a new digital health plan mm. for the entire UK health system looking out for the next 10 years. And a lot of the lessons we've drawn from mm. the COVID experience, you know, COVID was a, it was a catalyst for change. Uh, for example, here in the UK, uh, the NHS app, before the, uh, before the pandemic, I think some there were 2 million users. Mm. Uh, now there's over 28 million. It's uh, two thirds of the adult population. And they're still using it for, you know, for the, whether it's GP information, it's uh, getting their own medical records mm. and things. And we've announced that we're going to be adding a lot more functionality, including virtual appointments and things uh, to that. And I think people welcome that because they've seen mm. the difference that digital uh, can make. Uh, but also just find on, on the information point, I, I completely agree with what uh, Mansouk said. And one thing I, I, I just found, and I, we've had this in the UK and in India, but it wasn't in every country, which is having some political consensus, having politicians agree mm. that vaccines work, they're a good thing. And, and that was the case in India, it was a case in the UK. It wasn't a sort of political dividing ground. In some countries, including yeah. the United States and, yeah. uh, and others, that, that unfortunately became a bit of a political battleground. And, 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 and that had a price to, to pay in terms of dealing with the pandemic. And we've seen the number yeah. of people vaccinated as, as yeah. a result. It's yeah. quite, quite good in the UK. Yeah. Interesting. So I think we're going to have to leave it there because we've, we've run out of time. But I really want to thank you very much good. for your time, thank you. uh, Secretary of State. And thank you as well, Honorable Minister Mandavia in India. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.